In this video, we discuss the case of a patient who underwent TAMIS for anterior low rectal cancer after chemo radiation. The patient is an 83 years old man suffering from severe comorbidities with a diagnosis of rectal cancer in September 2019, staged as a locally advanced tumor, 6 cm from anal verge, proximal to the anorectal ring. The patient underwent neoadjuvant long course chemo radiation with good response, but with histological evidence of residual tumor at post chemo radiation rectoscopy. The choice to perform TAMIS was secondary to the downstaging after chemo radiation and to the comorbidities of the patient, as he was considered unfit for major surgery from the local multidisciplinary team. These are the key points we are going to discuss during the video, and the first is a patient preparation. Complete bowel preparation was performed the day before surgery with the routinary perioperative antibiotics and the deep venous thrombosis prophylaxis. This is the preoperatory rectoscopy with the anterior residual tumor. One of the advantages of TAMS over TEM is not requiring extensive position but in this case of very low and anterior tumor, we believe that the prone position facilitates exposure and subsequent closure. For all other tumor localizations, we always use the classic lithotomy position. After introducing the access channel with the cocker, we use introducer and uh, fix the access channel with the two simple points. After the jerk up closure, the CO2 tube and its sufflation stabilization bag are connected. We use a common laparoscopic column with a 14 mm Hg. We start tracking the limit of the excision before the margin free resection with the monopolar hook. The tumor was close to access channel limit, so in this phase, a slight traction operated by the assistant on the gel cap facilitates marking the lower limit. After marking the limits, we proceed to remove the tumor at the full thickness using ultrasound energy device. One of the biggest difficulty on this patient was the exposure of the tumor that was very low. To improve it, was required to reduce air loss holding the port by the assistant. One of the most important things is a try to remain perpendicular to the rectal wall in order to not compromise the deep margin. For anterior tumors, great care must be taken not to produce prostate lesions that especially in uh, elderly patients are increased in size with subsequent risk of bleeding and infection. Tractions should be performed on the healthy margins and the specimen should always be pulled the less as possible in order to avoid fractures. In this case, due to lesion position and exposure, was necessary to pull the specimen several times, but uh, all tractions were uh, handled carefully and in the end the specimen was uh, undamaged.
After excision, the rectal wall was oriented and examined intraoperatively by pathologists to assess the margins, as we always do during TAMIS. The surgical defect was closed transversely with two semi-continuous barbed sutures of jumbo resorbable monofilament. We usually close with a single continuous. In this case, being more than one third of the circumference, we uh, started to close the rectum from the right margin. Then we started a second continuous from the opposite side. At the end, we used the previous point placed on the right margin as traction. This is the start of the second continuous from the left side. Recent studies suggest that the transanal wall closure may not be necessary. In our experience, we have uh, always closed it for hemostatic effects, but also for prevention of infection and uh, abscess. Furtherly, we will evaluate the possibility of uh, not closing the wall for the smaller lesion than uh, the one shown. Being a difficult closure, despite we use self-locking sutures, we fixed the two ends with the two clips, but this is not something we do routinely. Patient was discharged on the second day with gas canalization, no fever and no local signs of infection. The final histological examination described a residual adenocarcinoma post chemo radiation extended to submucosa with all margins free of disease. Finally, we planned a retoscopy after 45 days from surgery. In summary, the choice to perform TAMIS over total mesorectal excision was uh, secondary to the downstaging of the tumor and to the comorbidities of the patient. These are some of the established advantages of TAMIS over TAM, with lower fragmentation rate, microscopic margin positivity and recurrence rate, with the possibility to use all laparoscopic instruments. One of the other advantages is uh, not requiring extensive position. Although in uh, low and anterior tumors, we believe 
that the prone position facilitates exposure during this action and uh, the final closure.